LGBTQ take up arms in New Hampshire. Story here at New Hampshire Public Radio. So I guess they're living up to their state motto of live free or die there in New Hampshire. And this is by Todd Bookman, came out today. It says here, you have to be dangerous back why some LGBTQ people in New Hampshire are taking up arms. Now this is funny. They've got a picture of somebody wearing a vest and on the vest it's got a patch with a rainbow flag on it merged with the equality flag and there's an AR-15 on it. It says defend equality. It's pretty cool actually. So the article starts out, in the corner of the parking lot of Puckatockaway State Park, a half dozen people assemble on a recent Sunday morning making small talk as they pull on gloves, wool hats, and gun holsters. Quote, I recognize the temperature is freezing and this is not the most comfortable, Finn Smith, today's organizer, tells the group. But if it's raining, we're training. If it's snowing, we're going. Hell yeah! Amid the hikers and snowblowers in the park today, these are members of a group called Rainbow Reload, an LGBTQ gun club that offers experts and the gun curious a chance to practice firearm skills in a supportive environment. Similar groups exist across the country, often under the name Pink Pistols. Rainbow Reload members stress that their mission goes beyond mere hobby. The goal is to prepare and protect themselves from a rising course of threats against LGBTQ plus people. And I'm all for this. Because if somebody's threatening your life, they're harassing you, invading your home, you have every right to exercise your Second Amendment. Quote, if the world is dangerous, then you have to be dangerous back, says Smith, who, like everyone interviewed, requested some level of anonymity, citing concerns about their safety. Quote, and that very much has pushed me to where I am now. And they've got a picture of him training somebody. After delivering a safety talk, Smith, who is carrying a Diamondback AR and a half dozen other Rainbow Reload members here, a smaller group crowd than usual to the presence of a reporter, begin hiking down a snow-covered trail, passing dog walkers who have confused looks as they see long guns slung over shoulders with rainbow patches on their vest. I just added that part. Every member of the group has a different story about how they arrived here, feeling the need to carry a weapon for self-defense. Quote, I went from concealed carry every once in a while when I was feeling it to every single day, explained Sharon, a Navy veteran and competitive shooter who transitioned last year because reading the news, having a few experiences, realizing that I've gone from old cis male, white upper middle class, really no fears about anything to there are people that are just looking at me who want to hurt me. You go, sister. Sharon, along with others, cite both the fear of being targeted while simply existing in public, as well as a more organized and ominous threat. A neo-Nazi group now active in New England has targeted spaces where trans people gather. Hey, man, if these people, like I said, if these people are harassing you, these neo-Nazis, exercise your Second Amendment. Girl, there's been an uptick in hate crimes. There's been an uptick in groups that have been pro uh, protesting drag story times and drag shows. Now, I have to split ways here. Because the people who are protesting these drag shows aren't protesting drag shows. They're protesting drag shows or drag time story hour, whatever you want to call it. With kids. That's what they're protesting. Not that you want to go and have a drag show. And I felt like I needed to learn how to protect myself, says Jamie, who is carrying a new pistol she received as a gift for Christmas. Ooh, baby. With our local rod and gun clubs where she could shoot, Jamie says she believes she wouldn't be welcomed as a trans woman or for her left-leaning political views. Quote, having to hide your identity when you are shooting with a group of people isn't really a great time, she says. After hiking in for about a mile, the group veers off trail deep into the woods until they spot a clearing. Smith marks off a lane for shooting while others collect down branches and start a fire. Then the range goes hot, and that's in quotes, and people take turns on the line aiming at a targeted place in front of a berm. The experienced work with the less inexperienced, and everybody shares guns, and they geek out on scopes and optics. Actually, this sounds like a pretty cool club to join. Politics aside. 
While pink pistol clubs have been around since at least 2000, there's only limited data available on gun ownership rates among LGBTQ people. But in 2020, a UCLA study found that 21.5% of lesbian, gay, and bisexual people live in a house with a firearm compared to 36% of heterosexual adults. In terms of partisan breakdown, a recent Pew study found that about one in five self-identified Democrats own a gun compared to nearly half of Republicans. Rainbow Reload is not a political group, doesn't advocate for any gun policies, and among members, there are a variety of opinions. Quote, I mean, if you're going to go far enough left, you get your guns back, said Guardian, a pseudonym for a member who says he is fearful of his family being targeted when asked about his politics. Dressed in full camouflage, Guardian wears a hat with a patch that says, Make Racist Afraid Again. I like that. Hey, man, if you're harassing people, you're being a racist, a neo-Nazi, then, uh, you know, uh, you deserve to get a wake-up call here. But I want people to feel safe to be safe to be who they are, he says. Gunfire echoing in the background. I could just picture that. I could just hear that. Now, I remember when I was a kid, I shot a 12-gauge. You talk about a gun with kick to it. And the sound, uh, you, you can't describe it in words. The sound of when a 12-gauge goes off in the woods somewhere. It's absolutely beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. But it's not a matter of politics, it's a matter of whether or not you think certain people should get to live and be their genuine selves. After a few hours of shooting, they collect spent shell casings out of the snow and then huddle around the fire to warm up. Then they begin to hike out, the guns over their shoulders, a source of security in a world that feels full of threats. So this is an article at New Hampshire Public Radio the LGBTQ community taking up arms in New Hampshire, living up to that state motto of live free or die. I love it. Absolutely love it. Politics aside, I love it. Exercise your Second Amendment. One of our great traditions, one of our God-given rights, constitutional rights here in this thing we call the United States. So if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. You can also follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, because I write music in my spare time. Or you can find me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter, this is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. I'll catch you next time. And you know how we do it here. This is where the past crashes with the present.